Rashida, are you in agreement with that? Ah, Rashida said I'm younger. But listen, I'm telling you, I'm going to share some things that I did in my 20s, 30s, and 40s that helped me to continue to look good. You got to you gotta definitely do that. So again, let's go ahead and get started. want to welcome everybody uh, tonight to what I call the doctor is in. I explained that on my last video why I do that. So if you want to know that, then go back to the other video and you will be able to know why I call the program the doctor is in. Uh, I'm going to be addressing, uh, as some of you have gotten the invitation, I'm going to be addressing um, the order, the order of the church, um, and what happens when church order is established. And there are several things that you should be able to expect when the proper, uh, church order is established. And, um, one of the things that prompted me, um, to do this video was I, um, was invited to watch, um, Brian Keith, um, Bishop Apostle Brian Keith Williams, video that he recently released and he was dealing with um church leadership and how and well it covered a lot of things um but several things that he mentioned in the video really prompted me to want to address them from another perspective so while i get and do understand that not everybody is called to rebuke leadership and while I do understand that not everybody can address when a leader is uh, overtaken in a sin and in a fault, and the Bible does give us clear biblical principles on how to do that, uh, I want to do. I do want to say that um, there is a there when proper uh, leadership is established, there are set certain things that don't need to happen and there are things that you can put an expectation on there are things that you can expect look for count on guarantee when you are under or with I don't want to say under because under denotes and kind of has a bad connotation some people don't like that and I get it you know uh, when you are with because we are called alongside to help in ministry we're not called alongside to sit under somebody's thumb you know, that you can't move until they move their thumb. That's not, that's not what it, what it is. God has called us to, um, to become a uh, corporated or to, to come alongside and assist an individual in ministry. And when you are called to come alongside and assist an individual in ministry, there are certain things that you absolutely Good evening, Carol. Um, there are certain things that you absolutely can expect. And so that's what we're going to be dealing with um, tonight. And so uh, let's just kind of um, go. Let's just kind of jump right into it. So number one thing that I want to say tonight that you can expect when church order is established and that you can that no one has to yell or command respect or attentiveness. Uh, one of the things that I'm very disconcerted with when I watch a uh, mainstream, um, and when I say mainstream, I'm not talking about, you know, just um, Bishop Jakes or, um, you know, Joel Osteen, because they don't particularly practice this. But when you watch some of the mainstream YouTubers um, that are uh, preachers, you know, they're, they're yelling and they're angry and they're, you know, you don't, you, you don't have to do that when you are, you know, in your proper place and you understand um, the Lord's authoritative voice in a church, in a ministry and in an organization. Uh, when you're, when church order is established, nobody has to be yelling at you like you're, like you're a child. I wrote an article, well, it's not really an article. I wrote a blog that um, the 21st century church is not ready for the adult Christian. Let me say that again. The 21st century church is not ready for an adult ch uh, uh, Christian. Uh, most churches gator, um, cater to um, what we call, uh, what I call adolescent ministry. So they call everybody son or daughter. And I get it. I get the concept behind it. But I'm an adult Christian. I'm not a baby Christian. You don't have to babysit me. I don't need, I don't, you know, I don't need a babysitter. You don't have to, you know, come and wipe my nose. I know how to go to the bathroom for myself and how to change myself. You know, um, I am an adult Christian and adult 
adult Christians understand their responsibility. An adult Christian understands, um, you know, boundaries. Um, an adult Christian knows how to conduct themselves. An adult Christian can miss a church service. Hello, somebody. An adult Christian can miss a church service and not uh, you know, need a phone call. An adult Christian can, you know, um, make decisions concerning their lives. I understand. Listen, I've been a pastor for many, many years and presently an apostle. I've been in ministry. Some people don't re realize it. You know, I've been in ministry since 1984. I was ordained as a, um, as a um, missionary in the churches of God in Christ in 1984, got my evangelistic ministry license, probably two or three years after that. I have to pull the certificate to really, um, realize that, but I've been in ministry a long time and seen a lot of things. And so I'm not a novice at what I'm talking about. Um, but when I say that the 21st century church does not gear to the adult, uh, to the adult Christian. And so they want everybody to be treated as if they're a toddler, as if they need, you know, need that type of supervision. No, that's not what we're talking about. And so when, um, and especially when correction is needed. You don't need um, a bishop, pastor, apostle, you know, yelling, you know, that, that, that denotes whenever you're in even a business meeting, you're in a one-on-one um, -on -one with your boss, when it get even in your relationships, okay, even in your relationships, I'm going to read through something different because I'm seeing this right here. Even in, when you're in a relationship when things get to the point where you gotta yell, it's out of control, and somebody is feeling disrespected. Okay, when thing when things go so when you're when you're under established leadership and the adult Christian understands their place and the leader respects the adult Christian, there's no need for yelling. Um, and I, I I had to learn that. You know, there was a time when. Um, I was a young pastor and I felt like, well, I never did a lot of yelling because I don't like yelling. But really, in, in terms of um, uh, handling or, or um, commanding respect, um, I handled it a lot, a lot differently because now I understand authority. And when you understand authority, you'll handle things differently. And let me give you um, scripture on that. So the Bible says that as Jesus was um, on his way, to, to uh, go into a city that a, a man came whose daughter um, was sick when he left home. But by the time he got to Jesus, the daughter had died. And so, you know, uh, Jesus was going to go. But the man said, look, I, you, don't, you don't have to come to my house uh, because I understand authority. The, the actual King James says, I am a man under authority. But when you research that, it means I am a man that understands authority. Adult Christians understand authority and there's no need for that hand um, holding so the man said if you just speak the word speak not yell not any of those some other things i'm going to be going to if you just speak the word my faith is in the ability of the christ that's speaking and the adult Christian recognize, re recognizes that the adult christian recognizes the christ authority and not the man authority or the woman authority. I can respect you whether you're older than me or younger than me. I don't respect you, the person. And what while I may on another level, you know, have great respect for you as a man or a, or a woman. But when it comes to the things of God, you know, I'm respecting the Christ in you. I'm respecting the God authority in you. And that's what I submit to. That's what I come uh, alongside and bring myself and bring my ministry, my giftings and anointings. I bring those alongside and submit to that. And so, number one, if you're if you're part of a ministry or you're listening to ministry on YouTube and folks start yelling and screaming, you know, I get it. Sometimes we get excited and sometimes I have to tell myself, you know, I haven't done it in, in, in a number of years, but sometimes I have to tell myself, calm down. It's not that serious. You're teaching. You know, you want people to be able to understand the principles and the revelation that you're sharing. So uh, when church leadership is established, no one has to yell or command respect or attentiveness. It is established. It's a, it's a given. OK, I don't you don't have to yell at me to tell me, you know, that you're the king of the king and, you know, you're the you're the apostle. You don't have to yell that. 
it'll already be established with its proper church leadership. Okay, number two, you won't have to browbeat members into submission. Again, you know, when you when proper church leadership is established, you don't have to browbeat members into submission. You don't have to shame them into submission. You don't have to put them, as we call it, put them on blast um, to get them into submission. You know, I've heard I've heard people, you know, um, that have come to me for counseling and, you know, just for missing one church service. I mean, you, you're faithful. You're there every time the church doors open. And I'm primarily talking, you know, not this this one I'm sharing right now may not be an experience that all of the viewers who are, may view me tonight will be your experience. But this typically happens in the black um, Pentecostal affirmations where, you know, every time the church doors open, you're there for prayer, you're there for choir rehearsal, you're there, whatever church pick, you're there, but you miss one church service. <laughs> and it's as if you have committed cardinal sin. You know, you got people, you know, you got people wh- whispering, you got, you know, you, you get a phone call from, from the pastor just because you miss one, one church service without, with, without validation. Okay. This is not my, this is not my job. I'm not, call, you know, when you call in into work, yeah, you got to say, I'm not going to be at church because oh, I'm not going to be at work because I'm sick, got baby, da, da, da. But when you, you know, when you miss one church service, you know, as some churches, if you don't call, hey, and I used to run, I'm, I've been guilty of that. You know, you got to call. No, as an adult Christian, you can, you can miss, you can miss church. <laughs> Slap your name and say you can miss a service. Yes, you can. Doesn't mean you backslid. Doesn't mean you don't love Jesus. Doesn't mean you know. It just means I stayed home. You know, I I I went to go visit. You know, and again, it only have to be visit. It just could be because I woke up and just didn't feel like getting dressed. I didn't feel like putting on makeup. I didn't feel like putting on clothes. Listen, you don't have to browbeat people into submission. You don't have to make them feel guilty. Do you know how many people, you know, when you ask them, why why did you go to that service? You know, you know, I ask some people, why why are you going? You know, uh, they say, you know, I'm tired, apostle, you know, but I got to go. I got to go. So and so. So why? Why why do you have to go? Well, because pastor said or, you know, this minister's in town. OK. And you, 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 number one, your spirit is telling you when you get there is going to be a waste of time. Oh, that's why the Bible tells us to be led by the spirit. Okay. And I know for some of you, I'm giving you a lesson in maturity and that, listen, if your spirit is already telling you how many church services have you showed up to? I've been guilty. The spirit of the Lord was telling you all along. Don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go, stay home don't go. And because you have been, uh, you have been taught that, you know, every time church doors open, you need to be there and that it's better to be in church. It's, listen, ha- have you been taught this? It's better to be in church than to be home watching Criminal Minds. I'm, I'm just saying that because that's one of the sh- show I watch. Okay. I grew up like that, that, you know, go to church because all you're going to do is sit home and, and watch TV. I promise you, I've been to church services that it would have been better for me to stay home and watch Criminal Minds. I would have learned something. I would have learned about sanguination. <laughs> I'd have learned about, you know, collecting evidence. I'd have learned something rather than sitting in a service that was not meant for me. I'm saying, not saying it wasn't for somebody else, but it wasn't my destiny to be there. They that are led by the Spirit of God, that's who are the sons and daughters of God. Sons and daughters of God are not those who commit themselves to ministry and show up every time the church doors are open. Okay? That 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 doesn't make you a son or daughter just because you, you know, you cleave to the to the leadership and you carry their bag. No. They that are led, come on now, they that are led by the Spirit of God shall be identified as the sons and daughters of God. And so when you feel browbeaten into um, obedience. That is not proper established church leadership. I'm sharing this with you today because uh, Jesus is soon to come. And as an apostle, I have a responsibility to help the church be perfected and ready. 
And one of the things that may cause some of us to say, I did this in your name and I did that in your name. And he will say, depart from me. I don't know you is because we're not being led by the spirit of God. We're, we're, when it comes to when it comes to church leadership, we may be saved and love Jesus. But when it comes to church leadership, we have erred, and it's time for us to correct that. Okay, some of you that are that I'm watching your names, um, I know you have been, um, you know, you you've been all the way, you've been all the way left, you know, you've been all the way left, all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way, and now the Lord has corrected your course, and 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 you know, I don't, I wouldn't say I was all the way left, but there were some things that 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 I did that really definitely was unnecessary, it was uncalled for. And now that God has corrected my course as an apostle, I want the bride to be ready. You know, I used to be a bridal coordinator for a season in my life and I loved it. Um, it's just, it's a lot of work and demanding I, or else I would still do it now. But my main responsibility was to make sure that bride looked good, whatever, whatever that meant, strip, fixing a dress, ring, hair, makeup, taking off what I had on. And giving it to the bride on that day so she looks good, that's, that's what I did. And as an apostle, that's our responsibility is to make sure. And so I'm sharing this with you so that you can correct those things that may be out of alignment as it relates to church leadership. And some things that help, help you open up your eyes, open up, you know, open up your eyes so that you can see if you feel browbeaten into a place of submission, that is that is a pro improper church order. So when church order is established, again, we already said no one has to yell or command respect or, or to get you to have their attention. Uh, number two, you won't have to browbeat members <clears throat> into submission. Okay. Number three, leaders will submit to authority or proper church hierarchy. And this is where I'm going to spend most of what I'm going to talk about tonight. Okay. And that is proper church hierarchy. We uh, don't like the word hierarchy. So before I get into that, let me just make the statement again. Leaders will submit to authority. Um, when you, when proper church um, order is established, again, as I said, <clears throat> submitting to authority will not be will not be a problem. Problem. And if it's a problem, if you're a leader, you're an apostle, a bishop, um, and you've got wayward. Um, sons or daughters or wayward members of then you me the apostle has to look at what is that because it hierarchy is, is top down you know god first okay and so if we if we know that there's not a problem with god and then the holy spirit and we know that there's not a problem with the holy spirit okay and then then you and if there's a problem then the buck stops there Okay, you, you need to you have to look at you have to look at you and find out what am I doing or saying, how is it structured that it's not working? Okay? And so one of the things is you have to look at the at the hierarchy. Um we don't like the word hierarchy. For some reason, hi the word hierarchy has got a bad rap. We don't like we don't like it. We don't like to use it. Anytime we hear it, we you know make some of us cringe. But the reality is, a hierarchy is what God established. It is the word hierarchy means um, a system of persons of things ranked one above another. Okay, uh, hierarchy has to do with rank and God. Uh, I, I know that <clears throat> for some of you, I know you want everybody to be equal. We talked about this. Uh, on my last live video, some of you want everybody to be on the same level. Sorry, heaven has rank. Okay, the angels have rank. Why would you think that in the earth realm that God all of a sudden would disband rank and just allow us to be rogue and you know just do what we want to do? No, it doesn't, doesn't happen that way. I'm gonna um, lean in and read Gladys's comment. Um, I had a this is Gladys Marie. She says I had a dream about this last night. Um, we'll share it with you. Okay. So this part of the state of rebellion is what? Yes, yes, yes. State of rebellion and the state of rebellion. I just got to tell you starts with the leadership. Oftentimes like priests, like people, um, it starts there and we have wanted to try to fix it from the ground up. So a lot of leaders think if I fix the people, then it's going to fix everything. No, if you fix you 
and you're right, your motives are right, you're you're lined up properly, it will it will trickle down. It's like a, a, a um the 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 man of the house when he is in alignment and aligned with God. Y'all, excuse me, my allergies are really kicking up. I should have took an allergy pill before I came online. Uh, then it will then it will work. So let's just deal with that. So let's just deal with the fact that the word hierarchy is not um, something negative. It just denotes a system of rank. OK, the word hierarchy comes from the French. It's a French word. And um, the word literally means ranked by division of angels. OK, that you got archangels, hierarchy. So the word hierarchy is a system that was um, used to describe the rank of angels. OK, so if the pastor or the man or woman of God is considered to be the angel of the house, then why do we not want to embrace a hierarchy? Selah. Something for you to think about. OK, and again, I'm going to be addressing questions because I know some of you may have some because, you know, the way we've tried to correct this problem is by throwing the baby out with the bathwater. The way we've tried to correct erroneous, bad, horrible, abusive, destructive leadership of the past. The way we've tried to correct that is by throwing the baby out with the bathwater. And say it ain't nobody right, ain't nobody living holy, it, you know, all leaders are horrible and terrible, <clears throat> so therefore I don't need to submit to any leadership. And especially you got leaders, you got leaders saying that. You got, okay, so when I say leaders, when I say leaders, I'm talking about fivefold ministry um, assignments. The apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, um, and the teacher, okay? That's what I mean when I, and Thank you, Holy Spirit. And the, those other ministering gifts. Okay, so we're talking about the ministry of helps, healings. You know, I'm, I'm including all of those. Okay. So when I say that church leadership, so there, 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 there has been bad, bad um, leadership. Let's all concede to that. Um, but what has happened is that these individuals who are called to leadership positions have just said, I don't need, I don't need a leader. I don't need I don't need a I don't need an apostle, I don't need a pastor, I don't need to submit to church, and so therefore, you know, I could just be rogue and be on my own because God is my God is my covering. God is yes, but he also established a hierarchy that we must respect. Listen, like I used to tell my children, you don't have to like it, but you have to respect it if you want to remain in the house. Now you want to be rogue and go do your own thing and set up your own house, which many people have done because they did they don't like the hierarchy that is established in scripture and we're going to look at that because we we don't like that then we go and establish our own houses and because listen and because it's all you know you establish it like what you came from so okay so for example you're mad because you know you were under bad leadership and they didn't treat you right they they browbeat you all of those things it was abusive and so what do you do you go and set up your own church or your own ministry and you set it up to look just like the church you do what you do what you know so you you got praise and worship and you got singing and you got preaching but you, here you this is what you say i'm not going to allow my ministry to be just like where i came from and because you don't respect authority and you don't um, honor the hierarchy, then you draw those with that same re spirit of rebellion. Okay. It's rebellious to denounce, to reject. And and one of the things that we have to be very careful of, and I, I really want to thank God for my upbringing. Uh, my, uh, the very first Bishop of my life was um, the Reverend Mother Darius Cargo. And she taught us many great things of which I still hold near and dear. And I thank God for my foundation. Um, it was built upon the foundation of Jesus Christ. And I'm, I'm so grateful because I, I've met a lot of um, it, leaders uh, along the way. And I've come to know that not everybody has had a very um, sure foundation of their Christian experience. And I'm grateful for mine. One of the things that I remember her teaching and it's a part of my DNA and that was um, that we needed to be careful about blasphemy we don't hear that talk 
talked about a lot in the 21st century church. Again, excuse me, I'm so sorry. I need to, probably need a clean tissue because this has probably got makeup on it. But uh, we don't hear, uh, thanks, uh, baby girl Teresa, for saying this is a good teaching. I'm, I, I pray that it's a blessing. If it's a blessing, you all, can you guys give me a thumbs up or a like if this is blessing you, if you're learning something, if it's resonating. And even if you got a question at this point, even if you got a question at this point, if it's resonating true, then give me a th give me a thumbs up. Thank you. Whoever just did that, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, modesty. God bless you, woman of God. Okay, so one of the things that my former bishop, thank you guys. I'm not snorting. This is um this is Afrin. <laughs> so you guys are like apostle snorting up on Facebook Live. Oh, God, thank you guys so much for the love. Appreciate that. This is just for my allergies. I tell you, you guys pray for me. Will you guys agree I am allergic to any and every... I'm allergic to so many things. And so... But our bishop taught us on blasphemy. And one of the things that she taught us was don't blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. And she taught us what that was and how to be watchful for it. So blaspheme against the Holy Spirit well, I'm just going to throw that out there. So this is a question. And I'm going to take about, uh, let me, where's my stopwatch? I'm going to take about a minute. So um, Gladys, you can't answer because Gladys, <laughs> Gladys grew up with uh, with me uh, in um, the church, 8885. So I'm going to take one minute. Who can type what is blasphemy? And I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to go to Spreaker and see if I have any questions there. I'm going to go to chat. Okay, uh, if you're on Spreaker and you can answer that question, what is blasphemy? I know. Thank you, Kim. I should have. Uh, what is blasphemy? Okay, I'm going to take a minute and the time starts now. Uh, so it's, you know, that was one of the things that um, Bishop Darius, uh, Reverend Mother Darius Cargos taught us was what blasphemy was. So I'm waiting for you guys to to tell me what what blasphemy is as you understand it and i know that there's a little bit of delay speaking against the work of the holy spirit absolutely absolutely thank you prophet johnson for joining um absolutely anybody else come on what is blasphemy uh, Carolyn Dalton has already told us that blasphemy is speaking against the Holy Spirit. Anybody else? Blasphemy as you know it. And it's important, you know, as much as you need to know the, the gifts of the Spirit, you need to know what blasphemy is because you could be doing it and not even recognize it. Uh, Mary Elizabeth says anything that goes against the word of God or denies the Spirit. Absolutely. Um, Pastor Teresa, it is speaking against the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. Anybody else? Okay, let's see. I'm sorry. Uh, Kim Brown comment. Uh, Kim Brown says, speaking in an attempt to make it look like God. Come on now. It's one of my little, little, little babies. Speaking against or speaking in an attempt to make it look like God when it really is something like a personal opinion you better come on i know you done set up under under this apostolic teaching absolutely okay i'm gonna give it uh, another uh 10 seconds anybody else type what is blasphemy okay and even if you watch this video after it's completed um when when you type in your answer just tag my name and, and i'll know okay so let's just move on so yes blasphemy is to speak against, uh, modesty says speaking negatively about God. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking negatively about God and, and his word. Okay. So blasphemy is exactly those things that you see listed there, that it is speaking against the work of the Holy Spirit. It is speaking against God. It is taking um, our, one of our 10 commandments, taking the name of the Lord God in vain is blasphemous. Okay. To support blasphemous actions is blasphemy, okay? That's why I don't listen to uh, 21st century uh, comics, you know? That's why I stop watching certain TV programs, because they're blasphemous. They take the name of the Lord in vain, and they speak against the move of the Holy Spirit. Or they call things that are not of God and of the Holy Spirit and call it God is blasphemous. 
that is where we have a lot of gray area. And when ch- proper church um, leadership is a, or authority is established, you will not have blasphemy. So how many of us will be honest and say, I've sat in service where I know blasphemy was going on, but you still sat there. Raise my hand. Yes, Lord. Been there. Where you know a prophet, somebody speaking, even a singer singing, singing blasphemous, blasphemy, but you just sitting there because you, because you there. Okay. I'm going to take a minute and um, just read some of this. Shalanda says, I have an interview now. Ma, I will. Okay. God bless you, daughter. Um, we have to be careful. Okay. When we start speaking against the hierarchy of God, you could be walking into blasphemy and not recognize it. Okay. What our bishop taught us is that, you know, there is an unforgivable sin and we don't talk about this. This is kind of like, you know, this is kind of like, um, um, the, a, a Templar kept secret in 21st century churches. I don't hear it talk on mainstream stream that there, there is a sin that you can commit that you can't be forgiven from. I don't hear that talk. But when I was growing up, oh, they taught us to make sure, you know, make sure that you don't do this because it's unforgivable. And that is to speak against the Holy Spirit. And as a 21st century apostle, it's my responsibility to teach the church to bring us up out of that because there's too much of that happening, that we're speaking against the hierarchy of God and it's the spirit of God. You know, the Bible says that the spirit of God gives gifts and sets leadership according to, according to the will of God. And so if the Holy Spirit has set you in a place and set you under leadership and then you begin to reject that leadership or that lead, or they reject you, that's blasphemy. You know, to sit in a ministry where you've been sent there as a prophet or you've been sent there as an evangelist and they don't recognize. Now, I know some of you, this may be a mature word and you may not be able to wrap your mind around it now, but um, um, I believe it was Apostle Paul said, you know, uh, remember what I'm saying and consider it and just consider it. So, you're sent to a ministry as an as a prophet, as a as a as a evangelist, and you're sitting there, and they and the Spirit of God has given you that anointing, He's given you that gifting, and they don't receive it by the interpretation of blasphemy. That's blasphemous, and it is happening too frequently among our ranks. Okay, and we must not neglect the hierarchy of God. So let, let me go back and, and um, review for you the definition. So the definition, again, the word hierarchy means in its French. So it came from the French and the French used to deter to um, to uh, have a word for the rank of angels. They called it the hierarchy. And as I started to say before, um, that the hierarchy in the church is the same. We, the, 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 the pastors are considered to be the angels of the house. Okay. Um, from the Greek, it means the rule of the high priest. Okay. Uh, so for the French, it meant the rank of the divisions of angels in Greek. It meant the rule of a high priest. Um, it mean the, the rank of high priests or leaders or sacred rights or sacred offices. Okay. Um, that word does have a sense of rank, um, in organizations or per or persons. It was first established and initially in 1619 and w- it was initially referred to, um, as the clergy in a hierarchical order. Okay. So let's just deal with that, that, um, the hierarchy is not something negative. It is something that refers to the order of, um, established spiritual, um, ranking. So let's do, let's do number one with the word, um, the first part of that word hierarchy. So it comes from the word air. Okay. We are an heir of salvation. We are in inheritors. Okay. So that word air means, um, um, it means sacred. We, we, we are sons and daughters of a sacred and priestly right. Hello. 
those of you that are called to, to fivefold ministry, hierarchy is not negative because it's a it's a calling to, uh, to be an heir, to have an entitlement to a higher priestly ranking. And it is something to be reverenced. It is something to be respected. It is something not to uh, disdain. All right. So the word heir or coming from the word, you know, uh, the first part of hierarchy, the second part, arc or archy deals with structure. So when you talk about the, the hierarchy, it is a combination of, you know, those who are um, entitled or are heirs of the sacred priestly place in structure. Okay. Those who are heir to the sacred priestly place in structure, not destructure. Okay. Um, God has structure to his work. Everything he created has structure. Um, and I put this in, um, you know, in my, in my comments, nature has rank, animal kingdoms have rank and they recognize it. But in the 21st century church, most mainstream believers resist rank or the map of the church. And rather they, they, they would rather have a, uh, off the rack mentality rather than accept the hierarchical structure that God has set. The 21st century doesn't like structure. We now, you know, everything is deconstructed, you know, you know, deconstructed church, deconstructed food, deconstructed jeans, everything. Is, and, you, you know, these things slipped in on us unaware. It's like, you know, it's like they say you cook a crab, you know, you cook a lobster live, you put it in a in boiling in water and turn up the, the temperature. They don't even know they're dying. And that's what happened. From 20th century church to 21st century church, um, the deconstruction happened as we embrace deconstructed mentality because we were tired of the same. Okay, uh, in in cooking, they call it a deconstructed taco or a deconstructed um, lava cake. Why? Because they want to be creative and they want same ingredients, same ingredients, but presented differently. And, and we've done that. We've deconstructed the structure or the hierarchy of God because we resisted it. And again, that, in my opinion, could definitely be considered to be blasphemy to come against the structural setup of God. God definitely in heaven has rank. Cherubim, seraphims, archangels. Come on. You know, anybody that knows anything about um, the Bible um, knows that there there is rank. He established rank all throughout scripture. And so just because it comes to the 21st century church does not mean that we have to throw the baby out with the bath water and deconstruct what God has said. And so when I talk about a rack mentality, so as we're called apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. We are called to perfect the saints. That means to mature and develop the saints. And in so doing, I, I look at that as um, tailor making a dress or suit for an individual. Okay. Back in the 1920s, um, uh, very few people, clothes were not made in, in mass. Um, you had a tailor, you went to be fitted, you went to be measured and the tailor custom made, whether that, whether that tailor or dressmaker was a slave, um, in, in, you know, living outside the main house, uh, who could sew. Um, but everything was, was custom made. Everything was custom fit. Um, it fit you you were measured for it. You know, they measured every aspect, every, every consideration, every detail was taken into consideration. And when I think about how God set up the structure of the 21st, uh, how God set up the structure of the church, every element of who you are as a believer is taken into consideration. Every element is measured and God has given those that he has given leadership over you has given them the finite ability to pay attention to how you're made so that as they are fitting you, as they are equipping you, 
it's with that finite detail. That, I believe, is the intentions of God, that every believer um, would have that attention to their spirituality, to their spiritual development, um, to their to their mental and spiritual happiness, that it is with that type of care to detail that God wants you to be equipped, okay? And for those of you that are a part of leadership, if you're not wanting or willing to devote that type of attention to the people that God has called to you, then you might as well give that license back and say, you know what? I, I can't do this because it means it means measuring. It means, um, you know, taking the rod of the word of the Lord and making sure that it fits, making sure that what you are putting. I, I don't know who this is for, but I feel in, I feel my spirit, man, just imploring me to say this. If you're not willing to allow the word of the Lord to to finitely define where this ends and where that begins, then you you, you don't want to be equipped. Um, most 21st century individuals have a rack mentality. And what I mean by that, you just want to be able to go to church and pick what you want and put on what you want and go out the door. You don't want someone to finitely fit you for what you believe you're called to do or what God has specifically assigned you to do. I'm just going to lean over and read some of these. Wanda Fletcher says, yes, uh, even uh, God gave um, Solomon intricate details. Absolutely. Absolutely. Solomon, go back to, to Noah, intricate details, how to do it. You know, I skipped over this, the earth. I'm a, I love science. The earth down to, down to the smallest molecule is intricate and scientific to an exact science. God is about being exact, not being general. You know, yes, let thank you, modesty. And so if you're not willing, number one, as a believer to allow that to happen to you, then just say that. Just say, I, I, you know, I want to be rogue, you know, and that's your choice. And if you are a are a leader and you're not wanting to be that up close and personal, listen, making clothes is not for everybody because you, you, you may have to get up under a person's arm and you don't like the way they smell. But that's your job to fit that part of the body. The Bible says that we are all fitly joined together. That may be your area to, to work that. You know, modesty works with the homeless. You know what I mean? And you got to, that's up close and personal. Not everybody smells wonderful. Not everybody talks wonderful, you know. And so if you're not willing to um, meet individuals and give them the word of the Lord so that it can fit them, um, then you're not ready for this. You're not ready for the type of hierarchy that God has called for. Uh, in the 21st century church, the devil, listen, the devil has twisted the connotation uh, to which we now view as hi hierarchy. OK, uh, we view it as something negative and something that should be, as I said, be constructed and something that should be destroyed rather than something that should be embraced and explained with a biblical, spiritual um, perspective. It does mean, yes, it does mean that some of you and I have to begin to address erroneous leadership teaching and erroneous leaders presently operating in the body of Christ. It, it means exactly that. This has existed far too long and we've tolerated like lobsters in a pot. Um, I don't eat lobster, so... Um, you know, I, I don't cook it. Um, but I do know that, um, you know, we, we've adopted that mentality that someone has put us in, the enemy has put us in a pot and we thought it was wonderful to be out of the frying pan and we jumped into a pot and slowly the enemy has turned up the heat and we, we have been, we've been cooked. And, um, what I don't want to happen is that on the day of judgment, some of you get served. You know, as that cooked piece, piece of lobster, you thought you were on your way to heaven only to find out that Jesus says, I don't know you. I don't recognize what you've done because that scripture says that in the many will come in that day saying, Lord, Lord, did not we?
cast out demons in your name and do this in your name. And he says to them, the scripture says, and he says, um, depart from me for I know you not, or I, I don't recognize what you're presenting to me. There, there, there are going to be many things that people will present on that day that will present that look like church. And he's going to say, but I don't recognize that. I don't, I don't, not only do I not recognize it because I don't understand what I'm seeing, but my authority does not recognize that. So let me tell you what I mean by that. And some of you probably already got it. And I know for redundancy, but I'm going to share this because, you know, we're talking to a lot of people. Um, well, not that many. There are 10 of you that are on. Um, but for my last video, we're just a little shy under a thousand views. And um, thank you guys so much for sharing. And so potentially a thousand people could be watching this between now and next week. And I hope that they do. So let me just say this. Um, when you travel, you got to have the proper documentations, not only from the country, not only from the country that you're coming from, but the country that you're going into. Okay. They have to recognize that documentation. They have to recognize your legitimacy as a U.S. citizen. And in the U.S., as you know, the, the whole big immigration thing, you know, Donald Trump is not wanting to recognize legitimate documentation. Well, when the Lord says, depart from me because I know you not or I don't recognize that, meaning he's not signing off on that. Okay. What you presented to me, I'm not, what you're presenting to me as works of mine has been blasphemous and I don't, I, I'm not signing off on that. I don't know about you, but I've been saved too long, um, have done uh, a lot of things in the name of the Lord that I don't want him in that day to say, depart from me because I don't recognize what you've done, Norma. C can you, can you just imagine that? You know, that's why, that's why it behooves us to make sure that we are listening and obeying the Holy Spirit because then we're recognized as sons and daughters of God. Okay. I don't, you know, I, I'm grateful for the call that God has given me in the earth and that heaven recognizes me as God's apostle. I, I appreciate that. But the reality is I'm a, I'm a daughter of the most high God and I want to be recognized as that. Let me lean in and see what some of the questions are saying. So, so what happens when leaders don't take time to fit the people assigned to them? Wow. What happened with the person? What do they do? Okay. So here, here's the thing. The Old Testament clearly tells us that, that, you know, um, that's why it says, you know, the scripture says, you know, it t talks about in the Old Testament, it talks about, you know, to make sure that you understand your responsibilities as a leader, because not only um, do you have the responsibility to make sure you make it in, but you have the responsibility to make sure that they make it in you. you and if you don't warn someone of their sin, then that not warning them of or not fitting them can cause you to miss it or miss out on rewards or whatever that it is. I don't know. Now, we were taught that that it meant that you, your own eternal uh, salvation might be in jeopardy. That's how we interpret it. Now, I've heard others say that it means you're going to lose your reward. Um, but in my interpretation or my teachings that... If you're a leader and you're not fitting those who are called to you and that you've been, they've been sent to you. Okay. Just look at it this way. If you, if you went to a tailor, okay. And you know, you, you know, want to be fitted and they say, that's all right. I don't need your measurements. I, I, I can just look at you and I can just look at you and tell. And then they put some, they put something on you and you send you out the door. Would you go back? Would you go back to a place that is ill-fitted? You know, you bought something that everybody can look and say that don't fit you. Would you go back? Selah. We make things way, and that's why the hierarchy is set up. It's set up so that we don't make a mistake. It's set up so that it's just that simple. Okay? And so, yes, I do believe that leaders who do not um, outfit the individuals who are called to them um are held uh will, will be held to a higher to a higher um judgment i do believe that so let me just deal with that question a little bit a little bit further so i what i don't believe well let me just say what i do 
I do believe this. I do believe that when you recognize that you've been called to um, equip individuals, the, the evangelist, the pastor, the apostle, the prophet, the teacher, the scriptures in Ephesians clearly tells us that we are the ones assigned to equip the saints for the work of ministry. Our job is to fit, okay? While you do have others who, you know, they, they're, they're not an apostle, they're not a prophet, a pastor, evangelist, or teacher. They're just a loud sheep with, with good charisma, and they set up a church or a ministry. But they're really, they got an anointing, but they're not, they're not an apostle. A, they're not part of fivefold ministry. Okay. And so they will be held accountable for operating in a place that they, they were not, they did not have legitimacy. Again, I don't recognize that. Okay. So I hope that that answered, I hope that that answered your question. Let me see. Thanks for sharing this speaks volumes. Thank you. I'm glad, I'm glad you guys. Yeah. It's you listen when when I was coming up, you know, and I get it. Bad leadership has caused us to do some really bad things. Bad leadership for people not recognizing gifts in the church. It has really caused us to, you know, now anybody can be an evangelist. Anybody can be a prophet. Anybody can be an apostle. And it, it happens. And I and and I get it. But when we were coming up, you had to make your calling and election sure. I mean, and and some people took that to the extreme to say, you know, you had to jump through way too many hoops to, to get it. But listen, you got to take, you got to pass a test to get a driver's license, a written test, an odd test, and a road test. If we got to do that to just to be able to drive legitimately, how come those in in the church can't understand the hierarchical structure that you got to make your calling and election sure before you're out here trying to outfit people and you're not qualified. There's no stamp. There's nobody that can validate. There's nobody that can validate that the anointing that you say you have, it's valid. It's been proven. It's been tested. It's been developed. It's been equipped. Come on now, Lord God, help us today. And so when we were we, we were coming up, they they really made sure that we understood the responsibility that we have when we call ourselves preachers or teaching to others. That you know you know um, Paul said, "While I preach to others, lest I find myself a castaway." Okay, and so that's that, that's important, and that's one of the things that those who are a part of my um, mentorship they know. I get down to the, <laughs> I get down to it. You know, um, I never tell anybody that they didn't hear God, you know, calling them. I don't say that, but I let them know what the responsibility is when you say yes to that calling and what that means when you, when you take on sonships or daughters, that's why everybody that comes to me to say that they want to be a spiritual daughter. Mm, I, I ask them, do you, what does that mean to you? You say you want, because people will, they'll claim you as a spiritual mama and then drop you in the next five minutes <laughs> before the ink is dry on the adoption papers. Hello, somebody. No, when you, when you, when you call somebody, um, when you call somebody your, your spiritual son or daughter, that's for life. That's not until you get tired or until you find out something about them. That's why you need to, you need to make sure, you know, and it's blasphemous to say, God, to say God sent you, God is sending me apostle to be whatever, God is sending me to help you, whatever, whatever, and then you fall short. Oh Lord, help us today. Um, I was sharing this and then we're gonna, um, I'm gonna try to wrap this up and get some questions. Uh, I was sharing this earlier with someone about um, David, you know, um, when David went to go uh, kill Goliath, um, he went because he felt the injustice. You know, there was nobody else who uh, was coming up against Goliath. And he felt that, you know, he felt the disrespect that Goliath was giving. And he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that dares to defy the armies of God? And Saul wanted to put on David his armor. You know, he wanted to put on him what was suited for him. Saul got suited. Somebody measured his breadth, his length. And those of you that know Saul, he stood head and shoulders. Saul was a huge man. He stood head to shoulders above the average man. That's why he was chosen or that's why the people chose him. 
So the Bible says that David was a little ruddy boy. So come on, okay? Saul, first of, first of all, let's just look at that. Saul, we know from Scripture he was out of his mind. We know that because of, by his actions. But you wanted to put on a little shepherd boy what you wear? In the 21st century, people, I see Bishop Apostles doing that. You putting stuff on folks that don't fit them. It is, it's made for you. That's what God asked of you. That's what God required of you. And you're trying to put somebody, put that on somebody else and let them take that on. One of the things I love about that aspect of the story is that David had sense enough to know I have not been tried in this. This I, it, It's not been proven. I It don't fit me and I'm not putting it on. Him not putting it on did not take away from the fact that he was anointed to kill Goliath. He was anointed, he was anointed to kill Goliath, but he would not take on something that wasn't, that wasn't for him. You may be anointed to preach, pray, and prophesy, and all of that, but don't let somebody put stuff on you that you've not been tried, okay? It's not been proven, okay? It's not been fit for you. David did become king, prophet, and priest, but while he slayed Goliath, he was a shepherd boy, Selah. So, again, under proper church authority, you will recognize the spiritual hierarchy of God and accept it. And those parts of it that you don't understand, ask, ask God for clarity. Ask God. I did, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't come in 1984 when I accepted and did my initial call. I did not know what I know now did it and I thought if some of you would have knew me back then Lord if my mama was on here she would say Lord have mercy but some want to say this doesn't yes yeah there there are some that do want to say in the 21st century this don't this don't fit so I'm not staying here you're you're exactly right but there there but there are far too many Teresa who are just accepting it and putting it on and clearly it's too big and others we all you can see girl that don't even you, you know it you know the pastor says sister so-and-so gonna read sister so-and-so gonna read the announcements and she can't pronounce she she can't pronounce sanctuary <laughs> i'm being facetious right now but i've seen it just just that you, you're putting people in position because of money you're putting people in position because of nepotism. You're putting people in position for whatever, whatever, and clearly they're not. An, clearly they're not anointed for that. You know, a lot of people on Facebook got the got a title, and I'm telling you now. Listen, I told you if you come to me and tell me that the Lord, you know, gave you this calling, and yeah, I'm going, I'm going to respect that, and and I'm, but I'm going, I'm going to test the waters. So there are a lot of people that have apostle on their name on Facebook where they introduce themselves. And I tell you, inside of five minutes, I can, I can tell <laughs> by your conversation. The Bible says by your conversation. Lord have mercy. Let me let me try to finish this. OK, so um, we must embrace the hierarchy of God um, and embrace proper proper, proper leadership. Um, when we do this, the last thing I want to talk about, when proper leadership is established, there will be fewer spiritual fatalities. That means death of spiritual homicide or spiritual suicide. Okay. When proper leadership is established, we're going to see fewer spiritual deaths. I've seen way too many people die by spiritual homicide. Come on now, I'm gonna let I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait, let that sink in. Spiritual homicide. Let me read what Mary says. Uh, it's frustrating knowing when the Holy Spirit is continuously giving you a vision, and your leader doesn't believe you. That can cause someone who may be new to Christ to commit. You right? See you. You typed it even before I said it. You show right. 
When proper leadership is established, that won't happen. The a leader will not be intimidated. Okay? He called all the gifts in, in the body of Christ. All of them. The prophet. So you may be a leader. You may be an apostle, but you can't see as far as the prophet that's sent into your ministry. And you can't be intimidated by that. You can't you can't buck up and say, Well, you know, you, you might be the prophet, but I'm the apostle. That causes that kind of tension and it's really detrimental. Okay, so let me go back. When proper leadership is established, you won't have spiritual homicide. That that means that people are killing the gifts, the dreams, the talents, the ability, church growth, all spiritual homicide happening left and right. You know, uh, I, I love I love movies like, you know, Criminal Minds and CSI and Law and Order Special Victims. And I learn some things, not only in the natural, but I learned some things spiritual, you know, to be able to detect and to look back and find out, OK, sister so-and-so, sister so-and-so left the church. And she never come back. She, she said she don't love Jesus no more. OK, that's a spiritual homicide. So my spiritual acuity leads me to believe, so, well, how did that happen? How did she die? Okay, it wasn't spontaneous combustion. She didn't all of a sudden decide, I want to go to hell now. What happened? What led to that? What's the evidence? You know, and you know, it, 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 on on criminal minds to find the evidence, it could be something as small as a is a is a hair follicle. And there are some things that some of us are doing that's causing and leaving evidence that your words, your action, cause spiritual homicide. When proper leadership and the hierarchy of God is established, we will not, we will see fewer spiritual homicides. I'm not going to say we won't see any because sometimes, sometimes saints put themselves in detrimental situations. Okay. Um, you may have a good leader. You may have a, a good spiritual hierarchy, but if you sleeping with the bishop, yeah, you going you, you may be in jeopardy of spiritual homicide. That's not good. Okay, and not every uh, person that's committing fornication or adultery mean that they're a bad or God didn't set them up in hierarchy. It just means that their actions are causing them to be put in a situation that death may be the outcome of that. I'm not condoning um, leaders that are caught up in sin. I, I do believe, and let me just state my position. Uh, we're in agreement. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, yeah, I'm not disagreeing with you. So if there's anything that I said that may need some clarity, just type that in there. No, I'm not disagreeing with you, Mary. I'm definitely saying that, you know, leaders have to have to be careful that they do not call spiritual, um, homicide or spiritual suicide. Um, I see more spiritual suicides. Well, I, I, I'm going to say it's 50-50. I'm not going to say one is more than the other. Um, for those of you that are not aware of what I'm talking about, spiritual suicide is when you take yourself out. You know, so you say, you know what, this ain't worth it. Da, 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 da. That's it. I'm going to sit on my gift. I'm just going to go in the cave. And, you know, that's you're committing spiritual suicide. Why? Because proper leadership was not embraced. If you're If you're in that situation, Elizabeth, and you know, you and I have talked. If you're in that situation, why would you stay as a lobster aware in a boiling pot that you could potentially die from not having leadership to honor you or honor the gift? It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about the honoring the gift, honoring what God has given. Come on, that's like that's blasphemy. You, okay. I'm going to take, I'm going to use you as the example, Mary, because you, because you put it every Sunday, you get, you get the gift dressed. You put it on the best plate. You, you know, you're, you're, you're a servant and you're ready to serve your gift to the people. So you, you put it there and then you go and present it to the king of the house and he spits on it, takes, takes, takes what you've given. Okay. I don't want to do that. I want to break my mirror. I want to. I want to take something that I can just flip real easy. Okay. Nope, that's too small. Okay. So every Sunday, here you go. Every Sunday, I'm bringing my gift. 
the best gift I can bring. I'm bringing my gift to church, and you you present it, and then the 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 bishop overturns the book, overturns your gift, and throws it on the floor. That's disrespecting the gift, not you. And this is where we, this is where, again, as leaders, we have to, you know, you have to allow the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And it it, it divides. Okay. And so that's when you have to allow the word to separate you from the gift. Okay. So Mary may feel hurt, rejected, but what about the gift? What what is happening with the gift that's on the inside of you? So as a mature adult Christian, would you would you recommend to your child to keep presenting themselves before someone that rejects them? I, I dare say no. So why do you continue to go to a place where they're not honoring the gift? I want to be in a place, I want to be around people that honor the gift that God has given me. Now... <laughs> The the real deal is that, you know, we, we choose church by a whole different priority. You know, we choose church by how many members, how good the choir is, the aesthetics, the sound, the setup, the um, uh, the is it affluential? You know, how many doctors go there? We, we choose church by a whole nother criteria that has nothing to do with the hierarchy of God. Nothing. And that's why we feel bound. We don't feel free. The gifts don't operate. Nobody's being healed. Nobody's being set free. Families aren't growing. Finances. This is a whole plethora of things. And that that makes me get frustrated when I see people who continue to stay in situations where God is being disrespected. Not you. God is being disrespected. And I had to learn that. I remember, I remember probably about 12 years ago. And um, so for those of you that don't know, so I began ministry in 1984. So I've been in ministry. That means as a licensed preaching um, minister, I started off as a missionary uh, in the Churches of God in Christ, did my initial sermon in 1984, then got my evangelistic license. I started pastoring in 19... 19- Christianos. In 1998, I believe, is when I got my pastoral license, but I didn't start the church until that in 99. I believe that that's right. Somebody's got to do, do my history. I, I think I'm doing it right. Chris, they, they were born, yeah. So, right around, yeah, right around in there. Christiano was born in 93. So, yeah, somewhere around in there. Anyway, so I've been, I've been at this a long, long time. And, um, so when you, when I, you know, when I started, uh, you know, ministry, you know, you just gotta, and I lost my tra- train of thought. So is, this is going to come back. Um, or maybe the Holy Spirit didn't even want me to, didn't, didn't want me to talk about that. Or the enemy got me sidetracked and watching th- this feed and got sidetracked from what I was talking about. But we want to make sure that we um, do not stay in places. God, thank you, Holy Spirit. So I'm talking about, you know, not staying in places that don't honor the gift. And the Lord had to teach me, it's not about you, Norma. And so 12 years ago, see, don't you love the Holy Spirit? <laughs> oh my God. I love the Holy Spirit. He said, I'll bring all things back to your remembrance, whatsoever things. Anyway, so about 12 years ago, I was a part of an organization or trying to be you know, I was trying to be a part. I was really resisting this um, apostleship. You know what I mean? I, you know, I like being a part of a unit. You know, always, always wanted to be. It didn't necessarily have to be the leader. I just like being a part. <clears throat> so I was rejecting this whole. So anyway, um, my name Norma mean the name Norma means um, example. It means leader. It means one out in front and I didn't I didn't like my name Norma growing up I didn't I I embraced my middle name uh let me see how long I've been talking I need to I need to hurry and wrap this up um didn't like my name Norma um went by my middle name which is Yvonne um I felt Yvonne was sexier (laughs) I felt that it was you know that Norma was country just and I did not embrace it and when I did that I didn't embrace what the what my name meant 
I didn't embrace the leader in me. So even after preaching from 1984 until 2000 and um, so 12 years ago that, that made that made this yeah, whatever year it was. I'm sitting in a church service and um, the Lord, you know, began to let me know you, you know, you don't fit. And so I'm sitting in church service and I just start crying because I, I take it personally. I'm like, why well, they don't like me? What's wrong with me? How come that? I'm, t- I'm looking at it so personal. And so I'm crying, I'm crying, I'm crying. And so all my service is going, the Lord said, you, you're looking at this wrong. You're, you're, you're looking at it carnally. This is not about you, Norma Yvonne. What they're rejecting is what I placed in you. And you got to recognize that. And that when, when I begin to understand that, that they're not rejecting me, that they're rejecting God. When I, when I, I get a righteous indignation when people reject God. That that apostolic, you know, you can reject me and you don't have to like me. I don't care. But when you reject my father, that 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 raises it to a whole nother level. It it makes me respond differently. Let me tell you about an incident. We were um I had an apostolic team, it was called ATM, it was called the ATM, the Apostolic Team Ministry. And we went Wherever we went, we understood our assignment was, and it still is, my assignment in the earth is to take people from where they are and pull them where they need to be. And that's why this video, to take you from where you were and put you in a position where you need to be. That's my apostolic assignment. So we we went to this place in um, Charlotte, and there was a woman who was across the street from where we were assigned. And we we were um, inside the building praying uh, in tongues as as we uh, always do and I still do. Um, and so the team was inside praying and somebody said, you know, apostle, there's a lady across the street who's got the Bible open and she's cussing. Um, I said, what? They, they said, yeah, she, so the, the team kept on praying. Um, and I went outside and when I went outside, I said, stop that. You can't do that. You, you got the Bible in your hand and you cussing this woman. I mean, re- she, she was a. Um, small and stat smaller than me uh, in stature, woman, but she was she was releasing some 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 words out there. <clears throat> but I went to her in the authority of the apostolic to tell her, "You don't have an authority to do that. Stop it." That woman closed up her Bible, started crying, and came into our came into our service and repented. Now, I don't know. I don't. I, I pray to God she's still saved today. I don't know, um, but I know that day it was the uh, the apostolic authority, and this is what I had to understand that day about twelve years ago, sitting in that service. They're not rejecting you, and so those of you on this feed who feel rejected, get out of yourself. Those of you on Spreaker, listen, get. It ain't about you, your hair color. You, you, you can't dress enough. You can't lose enough weight. You can't wear the right ma- enough makeup. You can't buy enough shoes to fit in when they they want to reject the uh, the gift. Okay, so you know you gotta you gotta build up the gift in you and the appreciation for the gift in you. And when you appreciate the gift in you, what God in heaven has given you in the earth, how precious it is, how um, important it is, you won't allow that gift to be mistreated. And I I learned and and I'm sharing with you, don't let people treat the gift that God has given you any kind of way. Because God deserves the very best. I feel emotional about that. I feel tears like right, right, right behind. My God deserves to be treated the very best. Norma without Christ deserved hell. I was a mess. A mess. And without God, I'm still a mess. Without God, I'm a hot mess. But the anointing that God has given me, the gift that I am in the earth, I will not allow anybody 
to disrespect my God. And when you get to that place where you value what God has given you, hear me. When you, when you recognize how precious it is and how we're going to have to give an account, the Bible says we have to give an account, you'll stop, you'll stop allowing people to disrespect God. As an apostle, one, one of the things one of the things that helps to validate that you're an apostle is when you cannot stand for anybody to disrespect God. They can, you can say whatever you want to say about Norma. Yep, she's loud. She can be overbearing. Norma can, you know, set you straight in a way that can be humiliating. I'm very sorry. You can say what you want to say about Norma. But the gift that God has developed in me low these 30 some odd years, you know, this is 70, these 34 years. Nah, I'm sorry. I will not allow you. I will not allow you to destroy that gift. There are some things that kids can't play with in my house and under my authority. I don't allow kids to play with my cell phone. This right here costs money. And I don't allow kids to play with it. This that God has given me is valuable. It costs me some things, and kids can't play with it. Sila. Okay, I'm gonna. <laughs> Rena said, "Don't do it." Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm going to entertain some questions. Um, those of you that are still with me, I see that we have nine people that um, are still with me. Those of you that have a question, uh, you can ask your question. You got that right. It's not a toy. And I don't play with it. And if I don't play with it, I'm sure not going to let you play with it. And that comes with a level of maturity. I wasn't, he I wasn't here in my 30s. You know, I knew God had gifted me. But I, I, you know, I, I, I put a shadow over that gifting. You know, I would not turn my gift to the light. Okay. In fashion, uh, in photography, you know, so, the reason why some of you like my pictures is because I, I know how to work the light. <laughs> yes, Lord. Light is my friend, but back in the, I would not turn my gift to the light. I didn't want anybody. I didn't want. So, you know, if I had a shadow. You could still see me, but you know, I wasn't, it wasn't my best feature, but no, not now. You know, definitely. I learned how to turn my gift to the light. Any questions, any questions, anybody, uh, any questions before we wrap this up? I, I pray that this has been insightful for you all, um, tonight. I pray that um, this has been beneficial, uh, particularly for those of you who serve um, in leadership. Uh, embrace the hierarchy of God. Um, come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord. Come out from among those who want to have a disdain for the hierarchy of God. Thank you for the hearts, the likes, and the love. I appreciate it. Um, if there are no questions, I'm going to just check my... Um, text messages and I'm going to check my Facebook uh, inbox to see if anybody oh sorry modesty modesty said that um, she was having difficulty but on mine it didn't black out so I'm hoping um, but I noticed in the last video I did have some moments when it was freezing so uh, I do apologize for that um, Okay, uh, this is so helping me out. Oh, good, Diane. Great, great. Yeah, go back and listen um, to it from the beginning. So let me just um, come into agreement with the Holy Spirit's working in your lives and just seal this in a prayer to Abba Father. Lord God, thank you. Um, I shut my eyes not because it means anything to you, but I shut my eyes in reverence to, to let you know that at this time, I again affirm a shutting out everything that does not have to do with you and this moment right now. I thank you, Lord God, for every person that has, has viewed and those that will view I thank you for the revelation, the insight, 
the instruction, the correction, the wisdom, the laughter. I thank you for everything that you have, every ingredient that you have placed in this video. I thank you, Lord God, that it will benefit those who take the time to view it. I pray for their spiritual strength and stamina. I pray for their wisdom, Lord God, to be able to come out from among those things that are not healthy, come out from among those things that are blasphemous in their intentions. Lord God, peel back another layer of the darkness that the God of this world desires to cover our eyes with. Thank you, Father, for giving us fresh spiritual eye wash. Even now, I feel you're washing our eyes spiritually. So I thank you for uh, a refreshing, a great release. I thank you that the body of Christ is strengthened. The body of Christ is strong. The body of Christ recognizes her assignment and she prepares herself as a ready bride, accomplishing all that needs to be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all so much um, for um, viewing tonight. And again, as I started to say, I'm going to be starting a new um, venture in my life. And we're going to be talking about beauty. Um, if you have any suggestions, again, I, I'm going to call it Fifty Shades of Beauty. Um, but if you guys have any other, you know, maybe you thought about being a beauty vlogger before. So I'm going to be doing my first um, taping and I'm going to be reviewing this product. Um, I love lashes. I don't know if you guys can see it that way or if it looks better this way. I got to learn that. I got to learn product placement. <laughs> so I'm going to be working on this tonight and um, that'll be my first video upload. And uh, if you're interested in, in keeping in touch with that, then inbox me and I'll make sure you don't miss that. Thank you, Gladys. Thank you, um, Kalinda. I love you all. Thank you guys so much for your support. Um, you've been just, you know, many of you have just, you know, you're, you're with me along the journey and we're on a journey and uh, it's not finished yet. Got some healings and some surgeries and some things to go through. But th thank you for those of you that have been along. God bless you, Apostle Tracy George. Hey, my friend. Um, thank you guys. Um, my spiritual daughter, Teresa, God bless you. Kim Brown. Kim, you showed out tonight. That's all I. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Um, so good. Again, thank you all so very much, uh, Gladys. Oh, again, always you are a, you are God sent and God. You know, again, with Gladys, God connected us. I'm telling you, we've known each other for a very, very long time, our families. Um, but God sent me to the church where she was, um, and she was, <clears throat> she was spiritually assigned to to you know to serve me while I preached, but. In that, you know, God knit our spirits and just, you know, bam, just knit us. And and, uh, and so I know uh, I'm called to her life and so I'm grateful for that. All right. Amen. All right. Good night, guys. I will talk to you guys or see you guys another time. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for viewing. Oh, sorry, Spreaker people. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed um, our teaching tonight. Um, very, very honored to be able to teach this. So um, please continue to follow us. And if you'd like to see the Facebook Live video, go to my Facebook page and it will be there. I'm also going to share on some other uh, social media group pages. All right. God bless.